Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 8, which is high basic compound. And today we're going to focus on the subtopic of 8.3, which is preparation of alcohol. So in this video, we're going to look into the preparation of alcohol via this method. First, we have the fermentation. Second, we have hydration of alkene. Third, we have hydrolysis of haloalkene. And number four, we're going to have the addition of net reagent to carbonyl compound. So some of these are not new to you because you have accounted it in the chapter of alkene, chapter 7, and also this one in chapter 7. And as you know that, the addition of grignard reagent um, with carbonyl compound going to add the carbon chain to the product. So we're going to look into the preparation of alcohol uh, in the latter slide. Okay, so the preparation of alcohol, penyediaan alcohol, ataupun cara untuk kita menghasilkan alcohol, they're going to be formatted. First is the fermentation of sugar. So sugar can be, be represented in the form of glucose. And when it is catalyzed with the catalyst of zymase, we're going to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. So this method is applied to only the production of ethanol, but not applicable for the other alcohol. Okay, so um, this reaction here is going to produce ethanol only and the carbon dioxide is released as the byproduct of the reaction. So the fermentation in Malay, it will be called as penapayan. So it is um, popular in the kuih tapai or can be used in the production of wine. Okay, and as you know that when there is a catalyst is being involved, the uh, catalyst will have an optimum temperature to work. And if, it, if the temperature of the reaction is above 45 degrees Celsius, means that the enzyme is going to be denatured. It should be conducted at room temperature. Okay. And the second preparation of alcohol is via the hydration of alkene. So our reactant here is going to be alkene and it is going to be reacted with water. So the catalyst involved is an acidic catalyst which can be sulfuric acid or the phosphoric acid. So for the general reaction for the hydration of alkene, is when we have alkene and it is reacted with water with the acidic fight condition, we're going to produce an alcohol. Okay, when alcohol is being produced, means that it is, uh, this is the method of earth to prepare the alcohol. Okay, so the alkene, the carbon carbon double bond, going to break apart and hydrogen and OH is going to be entered here. Okay, so let us look into the example of this one where this is known as ethene with two carbon chain. When we react it with water at acidic condition, H plus and OH minus ion going to be inserted in the carbon carbon double bond and CH and COH going to be placed here in order to form an ethanol. All right, so this situation is easy because H and OH can be uh, placed anywhere. All right, but now when we look into another example where this alkene here is known as 2 methyl 2 butene Okay, one, two, three, four. So two methyl and two butene because the carbon carbon double bond is at carbon number two. And when it is reacted with water at acidic condition, H plus, the H and OH is going to be inserted. So H need to be inserted at carbon number three. Why is that? And OH need to be inserted at carbon number two. Why is that? Okay, the similar principle that the similar principle that you learn in alkene is applicable here. So we have to follow the Markovnikov rule. So hydrogen need to be inserted to the carbon with a great, uh, the carbon that attached with greatest number of hydrogen. So in this case, carbon number three is attached with one hydrogen. But for carbon number two, there is no hydrogen. So hydrogen can be inserted at carbon number three. Okay, so when hydrogen is inserted at carbon number 3, this is going to produce 2 methyl 2 butanol. Okay, and OH is going to be inserted here. Okay, and as mentioned, we have to follow the Markovnikov rule. Now we're going to move on to the next method, which is the hydrolysis of haloalkane. So, haloalkane, when it, is, when it is reacted with NaOH aqueous, aqueous NaOH, so the hydroxide, we can produce an alcohol. So for example, if we have haloalkene, where X here can be fluorine, chlorine, or bromine, 
when we reacted it with sodium hydroxide, which is, which is at aqueous, we're going to produce um, alcohol where X is going to be replaced with OH. And this happened with the presence of water at reflux condition. Okay? So let's see if we have the example here, which is the uh, bromomethane. So bromomethane, when it is reacted with NaOH, which is at aqueous, the OH is going to replace the Br here. So this happens via SN2 mechanism as what you have learned in the chapter of haloalkane. Okay, this is primary um, haloalkane and OH is going to attack from the back side and we're going to form a transition state and we are going to be um, kicked out as a living group and the configuration going to be inverse, inverted configuration. Okay, so this is something that you have learned in chapter 7 but it is recap here. Okay, so H2O and reflux and OH is going to be inserted here in order to produce a byproduct of NaBr. Alright, and here you can see that alcohol is being produced, which is a methanol. And this one is a bromomethane. Alright, now for the method number four, we can use the addition of green reagent to carbonyl compound. And as mentioned, this method is going to add carbon change to the product, which is the whole product is alcohol. Okay, let's say if we have a green reagent, so this one is a green reagent, when it is reacted with a methanol, okay, so what we're going to produce is a primary alcohol. So the primary alcohol here is known as the ethanol, and this is going to produce a byproduct of MgOH. X. Okay, and as you have learned in chapter 7 as well, which is the chapter of haloalkane, the CH3 here can be inserted there and double bond O become OH. And this is going to produce a primary alcohol because the carbon that is attached with hydrogen is attaching with only one alkyl group. Okay, so the similar step, you can use green reagent. And instead of using a methanol, you can use an aldehyde. Okay, for example, ethanol. So one hydrogen here is now changed into an alkyl group. Okay, and when you reacted it under the condition of ether and hydrolysis, so this one it is better for you to write H2O, comma H plus, and same goes to here, H2O, comma H plus. Okay. So what you're going to do here, the alkyl group is going to be attaching here and double bond O is going to become OH. So when you react it with the green reagent, when you react with ethanol, you're going to produce secondary alcohol. Okay, so carbon here is going to be attached with 1 and 2. So it's going to be a secondary alcohol. So in this case, it is known as 2-propanol. And this is going to abide, produce a byproduct of MgOH. OHX. Okay, and as mentioned, it's gonna add carbon chain. Mula mula, the other side to the carbon chain. But now, when you add one, the total of carbon that they have is two because one plus one. For this one, initially you have one, but now you add two. So you're gonna have three. One, two, and three. Okay, so it becomes two propanol. Alright. So similar step, if you have a greener reagent but now a longer one and you react with a ketone which is 2-propanone, okay? so what you're going to get is CH2-CH3 going to be inserted here and double bond O going to become OH. So it's going to happen at the solvent of ether followed by hydrolysis and this is going to produce a tertiary alcohol because this carbon here is attached with 1, 2, and 3 alkyl group. Okay? And this is going to produce 2 methyl to butanol. Alright? And at first we have 2 carbon chain and we add 1, 2, 3, 3 carbon. So 2 plus 3 is going to be 5 carbon. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So it is consistent. Okay? 
the summary for this, okay, and this is the byproduct, and the summary of this is based on what I have snapshot from the chapter of haloalkin. So we have looked about this in the last chapter, and it is it is was recap here. So you only use your prior knowledge in order to understand this chapter, which is cara kita menghasilkan alkohol. Okay. Now let us look into some of the example question. So the question asks us to provide the reaction scheme for the conversion of iodoethane to 2 butanol. So how can we produce 2 butanol from iodoethane? Okay, so first thing first, the best way is to draw the structure first. So ethane 1 and 2, uh, and it's going to be attaching with iodine. Okay, and then we need to convert that into 2 butanol. So butanol have four carbon, so it's gonna be one, two, two, three, and four, and it's gonna have OH at the carbon number two. Okay, now initially they have two carbon, and lastly you're gonna have four carbon. So you know that the method using Grignard reagent will be compulsory to be used. Okay, this is because that's the only method that you can add the carbon chain. Okay, there are the other there are other ways which is using cyanide ion. So you will be looking at this in the chapter of amine later on. But for now, you can use Grignard reagent to in order to add up the carbon chain. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create my Grignard reagent first. So from here, from haloalkin, I can create green net reagent first. So from green net reagent, I will, um, I will react it with a aldehyde in order to produce four carbon alcohol here. Okay. So let I let me draw again in the iodoethan nicely. So we have iodoethan, and now I'm gonna produce. A great net reagent. Okay, so in order to produce great net reagent, I need to add my magnesium in the presence of dry ether, and this is going to produce my ethane with MgI. Okay, so let me. Okay, so now my great net reagent is produced. So now my great net reagent can be reacted with aldehyde, which has two carbon. Okay, because they here are going to have two carbon, right? And my aldehyde here is going to also be having 1 and 2 carbon, okay, in order to complete the 4 carbon here. So I will draw the structure again, which is using my granite reagent. And now I'm going to react with, with my aldehyde, which is in this case, is it is an ethanol, okay, 1 and 2 carbon. So it's going to be ethanol, okay. And then I'm going to react it with the hydrolysis, which is H2O and H plus, at the dry ether as the solvent. So what I'm going to do is that this one and two, one and two carbon going to be inserted here, and double bond going to be H. Okay. So one, uh, once I do that, I'm going to get one, two, three, four carbon chain, which is referred to butanal. Sorry, buta, butane, but then because I have I have OH here, so it's gonna be butanol. Okay, and the butanol OH here is attached to carbon number two, so it's gonna be two butanol. All right. So from iodoethane, I have successfully converted it with two butanol via a reaction scheme here. So step number one and step number two. Okay. And from two carbon chain, I add up with another two carbon chain, I'm gonna get it four. Okay, one and two, three and four. All right. Now let us move on into the next question, which is show the preparation of one butanol from one bromo butin. Okay, so it will follow almost a similar sequence as above, but via different synthetic group. Okay, cara penyediaan one butanol daripada one bromobutin. So first, we have to draw one bromobutin first. 
So butane will have four carbon, which is one, two, three, and four. Okay, and then at carbon carbon double bond at number one here, it's going to be attaching with bromine. Okay, and now we're going to convert it into one, one, two, three, four. And at carbon number one, it's going to be attaching with OH. So this one is butanol, one butanol, or usually we don't put number one. And then we have one bromo put in here. Okay, so from here you have four carbon, and here you also have four carbon. So for this one, you don't have to use Krignet reagent. Okay, there might be another way in order to do this. Okay, so I think the best idea is we can do the hydrogenation first in order to make an alkene, and then this is going to produce an haloalkene. From the haloalkene, we're going to do the um, nucleophilic substitution reaction in order to convert our haloalkene into butanol. Okay, so let's draw that nicely. So first, I have my bromo, one bromobutene here, and then I'm going to do hydrogenation where I add hydrogen into the system. And this happens with the presence of catalyst of platinum at 50 degrees Celsius, for example, and this gonna produce butene into a butene because hydrogen gonna be inserted here. Okay, so from one bromo butene it become one bromo butene. Okay, now I'm gonna draw this structure again, which is here, and now I'm gonna react with an AOH. So this will undergo SN2 reaction where my Br here going to be replaced with OH. Okay, so this reaction is something that you have learned in chapter 7 of haloalkene. Okay, so this one is a primary haloalkene, so it will undergo SN2 reaction. So OH is going to be attacking from the back side, and then uh, it will form an activated complex before Br is being removed as a living group. So this need to be happen at the presence of water and reflux. So you know that by the end of the reaction, OH is going to be inserted here and Br going to be removed. Okay, and we also going to produce a byproduct of NaBr. However, the byproduct here usually is not the compulsory thing to do because we are interested with the alcohol, not the byproduct. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!